Praise the Lord, I'll just wait a second while I get finished setting up. Time gets away when you've got a little bit of time, and then all of a sudden, it is time, it is time. We're going to get into Bible study and Word study tonight and study something that it's, I got three pages of notes here, and I'll see if I can get to it. If not, I'll break it up. I have another little clock to keep track of the time. If it gets to be too lengthy, I'll get to a stopping point. Praise the Lord. Glad you're here. We're just going to get started here and get into prayer. And uh, I have lots of notes and lots of information. It's, you may have to listen to it. Hey, you're beautiful too. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. And uh, love you a lot. So glad you're here. So glad people are here to listen to the Word of God and what we're going to talk about. I'm going to get right into it because it, it's a lot of information. You may even have to go back and watch it a second time to collect some of the scriptures, some of the information to write it down and take notes because there's a lot a lot of these. I, I mean, I, I was working at this until after I got through taking care of my car, of course, in different situations, working at it till nearly three o'clock trying to get it done between interruptions and things so, so it's a lot of information so I, hopefully if i don't get it all in today it'll be i'll do the second part next week but hopefully we can get it all in if we get right into it we're going to pray lord jesus we thank you for your word we thank you for your love and your kindness and what you've done for us and lord we thank you that you'll move in hearts and lives and all those that listen all those that hear and all those that we might learn your word that we might apply that word to what we need to hear in jesus name amen praise the lord <clears throat> tonight's lesson is on the word hypocrite or hypocrisy hypocrisy i think <laughs> however that's pronounced i'm not very clear on that but so hypocrite, it's in the Bible. Jesus said it many times, and I talked about it recently in a message that he mentioned it in some of the scriptures. We're going to go over what it really is. And I found some things that I was even amazed, a couple of things, you know. Oh, wow. Sounds so much like things ha going on in our churches today, you know. So God knows why he's doing it. First of all, the... Some of the scriptures, there's a few others, but I'm going to list just some main, some scriptures that apply to what we're talking about. Uh, and you might want to write them down or get your, uh, take notes on what I'm saying. But it, uh, the word hypocrite is found in Job 10, not 10, I'm sorry, Job 13, 16. And the twenty and chapter twenty, verse five, and chapter thirty four and verse three thirty. I'm sorry. <laughs> and also found in Isaiah nine seventeen. But I'm going to read one scripture, and there's a few others that in Proverbs. But I'm going to read one scripture in Proverbs, and then we'll discuss what it means in the Old Testament. Proverbs 11, 9. Proverbs 11, 9. With his mouth, the godless man destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. All right, in the Old Testament, the hypocrite means godless. They're soiled with sin. They're filthy. Impious. I-M-P-I-O-U-S. Which means not showing respect and reverence, especially for God. They're moral and uncleanliness and se separate themselves from God. They pull away from God when we need to pull to God. We need to gain God. 
without eternal hope. They don't have a hope, the eternal hope of salvation because there's many places where it talked about, the, and I'm going to discuss that, hypocrites, where do they end up? They go to hell. So they don't have the hope of heaven. They are in conflict with the righteous and are known for their cruelty to others. So they're constantly fighting. They're constantly... And I, I, I skipped one uh, sentence. They re will only get re or receive God's anger. In the enemy... Be merciful at times, because there's a, I found a scripture where it said he might be merciful, but when the time comes, he will show his anger. He will show discipline or righteousness or uh, judgment on that person. All right, going back to that scripture 11 9, with his mouth, the godless, the hypocrite man destroys the neighbor. But through knowledge, the righteous will be delivered. So the right things will be delivered. <clears throat> All right, we're going to go to the New Testament. There's a lot of information. In the New Testament, and even Jesus explained some traits and characteristics that we're going to talk about what hypocrisy was. The New Testament finds it... <laughs> this was a... I kind of had an idea, but to define hypocrite would be they are just, an, in the Greek, means actor. They're an actor. They pretend to be something they really aren't. They attempt to fool others. People who put on an act in public but only pretending. They wear a mask that conceals their spiritual blindness and corruption in the heart. And I recognize quite a few people I've, through my life, you're thinking about this, what they are. They're, so we're talking about hip, hypocrites, Rhonda. So you may want to, hypocrites, um, they wear a mask that conceals their spiritual blindness and corruption in the heart. You may have a mask on, but in the heart they're full of hate, full of hate, full of sin, full of corruption, full of filthy sin. They have pride, lust, wickedness, and are fools. They are a child of the hell. And blind guides. This is just some terms. And also, in order to describe a hypocrite person, we're talking about hypocrisy, a hypocrite. They appear to be righteous, but are un unrighteous in reality. They appear to be righteous, but are unrighteous in reality. S they have a sinful nature. They haven't done away with their carnal nature. They dishonor God and distort His Word. Misuse the Word of God to their own benefit. Hello. Welcome. <clears throat> Talking about hypocrites. Um, they dishonor God and distort His Word. They seek to be popular and important and noticed in the public eye. They seek out to be important. And somebody who, in the scripture, talks about uh, that the rich man, uh, some event or uh, wedding, and uh, he would be Jesus or whatever it was, I can't remember the scripture but it talks about that they sit in the high places they sit in the the wealthy places or the or the certain places in church they have to have 
certain things. They seek to be in popular, important, and noticed. They love and honor titles. They love to have titles. You hear some preachers and all that, that call themselves this and that. I could call myself a prophet all the time. I could call myself a pastor all the time. And I am a pastor, so that's when people, that's, I'm to be called, but I could be called an evangelist. I could be called a lot of things that in what God says and sees. But I don't care. I'm not seeking after titles. And see, and I have a doctorate. I don't seek after the doctorate. I, I use it only for my pen name, part of my pen name, and for certain things. But a hypocrite will love the honor and the... Uh, titles and accolades and awards and and all these things they want to be seen they want to receive they want people to notice them there's a stage in our spiritual walk sometimes we want people to notice us i know i've been there quite a few times seems like sometimes you growing up spiritually all right the hypocrite will keep people out of heaven and have a distorted gospel. And this is false teachers. Hypo hypocrites is another name for false teachers and prophets. They, they Unless they can go, unless they can have all they want, you know, they want to keep others. And they're not going to give the true gospel. They're not going to give the true salvation word and the word of God of what he's trying to say. Uh, let's see. Get where I left off. All right, Romans 16. Romans 16, verse 18. For such men are slaves, not of the, our Lord Jesus, Lord Christ, but of their own appetites. These are hypocrites, a description of a hypocrite. And their own smooth, flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. They're very deceptive. They flatter to get you to do what they, you, they want. And, they, and they're going for, they have selfish desire, selfish heart, which is sin, sinful. They deceive and use flattery and and go after pe things. All right, we're going to go to Timothy, First Timothy, four, the first two verses. There's quite a few places in the Bible to help describe what a hypocrite does and what his spirit is like and what his character is like. The first two verses of chapter four and First Timothy. But the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, this is today's time, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits. See, a hypocrite is deceptive. And doctrines of demons. What did I say? They are false teachers, distort the true word of God and the gospel. And people fall away and go after these kind of people. And there's so many false religions, false pastors and leaders here in even in the United States. And I have a big list of these false, and I'm going to explain something in a, a little bit before I get ahead of myself. Verse 2, by means of hypocrisy of liars seared in their own conscience as with a branding iron. See, they, the slaves were branded to, be, to show ownership to their owner when they, after a certain amount of servitude time. But their mind and their hearts are so bound and branded with this false doctrine, this false truth, this false, the lies that they 
are hypocrites. They, they are hardened, hard-hearted, insensitive to the Holy Spirit. In this scripture you'll find. They're hard-hearted, insensitive to the Holy Spirit, and uh, insensitive to the gospel and the needs of others. They are hard-hearted, insensitive to the Holy Spirit, gospel, and the needs of others. And I won't read this next scripture, but it's found in Titus 1, 15 through 16. Some of these scriptures, when I quote them to you, you might want to write them down and look them up later. Jewish leaders claimed to know in this scripture God, but were dis disobedient and morally worthless. See, what did I say? The hypocrite was full of corruption in their heart. On the, they act on the outside that they're okay. But in their heart they have problems. They have situations. Right? A hypocrite also speaks well of godly leaders of the past. They lift up godly leaders, certain ones. And I've heard this where people will praise me and talk about this and all that. How well you do and all that. And, but... I get I get up kind of sometimes get upset with them because they uh you oh you got good word you got this and all that but they won't do anything about it they won't listen they won't apply what the word has to say to them They speak well of godly leaders of the past but don't follow their practices or what they teach or what the word says or can make a the same kind of a commitment to God that these leaders did. Because in order to be true godly leaders and really living for the Lord, it takes a commitment to God. Full, sold out commitment. Putting aside all this earth. And what did I say? Uh, I'd rather have that... Uh, uh, the message last week of I'd rather have Jesus. Having that full commitment, regardless of what this earth may have. But, of uh, commitments to God. And they don't commit themselves to God's word and righteousness. They're after their own, what did I say in the, earlier? They're after their own selfish desires. What did that say in Timothy? After their own selfish desires, their own way of thinking. Other words that is used to describe hypocrisy or hypocrites that I found in the Bible dictionary shows deceit, self-righteousness, deception, crookedness, and treachery all describe a hypocrite. All right, we're going to go to some scriptures and then talk about what Jesus had to say. I'm going to read... Some scriptures that Jesus said. Jesus. The first one will be Matthew 6, the first eight verses. Jesus said, Beware, this is talking to us, Beware of the practicing of your righteousness before men to be noticed by them. Otherwise, you have no reward with your Father in heaven. It's a big. Where that you're not going to be fall into the trap of being a hypocrite. When therefore you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. And when you give alms, do not let your hand left hand know what your right hand is doing that your alms may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will repay you and when you pray you are not to be as the hypocrites see he's talk when he talk Jesus talks about hypocrites he's talking about the uh, scribes and Pharisees 
And he was a Pharisee too, so he knew their tactics. He knew who they were. He knew their how they lived, what they did. And when you pray, you are not to be as a hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners in order to be seen. What did I say? Being outwardly seen by men. Truly I say unto you, have they have their reward already in full. That means no hope for heaven. But you, when you pray, go into your inner room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you are praying, do not use meaningless reputation, rep, rep, repetitions, as the Gentiles do, for they suppose that they will be heard for their many words and chants and and, and uh, many different religions talk about do end up doing these chants and these uh, motions and all these different things, thinking that God's going to see them. Even the Jews, if you notice that, the Bob as they pray and say chant these chance of what their religion gives. Because they'll, as the Gentiles, because they they expect to be heard because of their many words. Therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask. And then he goes on to teach the Lord's Prayer, which we won't get into that. Also found in the 16th verse, when you fast, do not be as a gloomy face as the hypocrites do, for they neglect their appearance in order to be seen fasting. Truly I say unto you, they have their reward in full already. Alright. Chapter 15. Uh, let's get the right scripture. Chapter Matthew 15, these were all in Matthew, 7 through 9. You hypocrites, rightly did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, This people, and this is true of the ch many churches, why do you think I was saying, posting the other day about uh, true worship and true things in the church? This people honors me with their lips. But their hearts is far away from me. But in vain do they worship me. Teaching as the doctrines and the precepts of man. Also chapter 16 verse 3. And there's scriptures in Luke. Luke 6, 42. Luke 12, 56. Luke 11 is this, has a lot of the same, which I'm going to read the next, found in Matthew 23. Luke 11 has a lot of those. And also, Romans 2, 21 through 24. Romans 2, 21 through 24. And I'm, I know it's a little lengthy, but I'm going to quickly go through the chapter of Matthew 23, Jesus describes what a hypocrite and Pharise the Pharisees did as hypocrite, to become hypocrites. Then G and I'll quickly read through this and then I'll discuss a few items. And Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees are seated themselves in the chair of Moses important places. Therefore all they tell you to do, observe, but do not do to, to their deeds, for they say things and do not do them. So don't do what they do, because they're not obeying their own words. Just obey the word. And they tie up heavy loads and lay down on men's shoulders, but they themselves are unwilling to move them with so much as a finger. They don't want people to be uh, light, their loads lightened spiritually and in the church. 
They're constantly given. See, the Pharisees and all that de took the laws and made their own interpretations and all these added little clips and things and do's and don'ts that wasn't even in the law. And that's what Jesus was c complaining to them about. But they all do their deeds to be noticed by men, for they broaden their phylacteries. Phylacteries are, they would tie around their wrist. If you've seen a, a full-fledged Jew, uh, they would tie it around their wrist and in a little box or around their forehead, and in that would have some of the canon laws, certain ones in there. Yes. They're a religious spirit. That's one describe. I mean, that's a good description of what a hypocrite is. Religious. And lengthen the tassels of their garments. What did I say? The tassels on that tallit. They lengthen it. They try to be more famous than the other. Try. Oh, I got bigger things. I got a nicer. I've seen went to some churches like all these. Fancy clothes and seeing who can outdo one another. And they love the place of honor at banquets and the chief seats in the synagogues and respectful greetings in the marketplace. They want to be greeted. They want to be noticed. They want to be, and they'll get upset with people. I've had, I've seen people. They get upset if you don't talk to them. <laughs> Or recognize them. Or honor them. Green in the marketplace. Being called by men rabbi. So they want to be called father. Rabbi or teacher or whatever they, you know. And I've had people say, no, you call me this. You call me that. No, I'll call you what God says you are, you know. <laughs> but do not be called rabbi. For one is your teacher and you are are all brothers. So you, you're no more important than your fellow man, in other words. And do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father who is in heaven. And do not call anyone on earth your father, for one in he the father who is in heaven. And do not be called leaders, for one is your leader, that is Christ. But the greatest among you shall be servant, and whosoever exalts himself shall be humbled, and whoever humbles himself shall be exalted or brought low and humiliated. humiliated. But woe unto you, see, several times he says this term, woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut off kingdom of heaven from men, for you do not enter yourselves, but do not allow those who are entering to go in. What did I say? A description of hypocrite? You don't want to go in, but you prevent others from going in. You don't want to know that they don't want to know the truth. They don't want to teach the truth, but they prevent others from doing it. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour widows' houses. And even while the, you pretend make long prayers, uh, Therefore you shall receive greater condemnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you travel about, travel about on sea and land to make one proselyte or bring one to, into your fold or into your, your belief system. And when he becomes you, one, you, make, you disciple him and make him twice as son of hell as yourselves. You teach him all your, the, your corruption, how to be corrupt. I've seen ministers and prophets and all that are money collectors. They're actually a lot of them are actually encouraging and teaching the young one coming up how to get money, how to do this, how to do that in this worldly way and have corruption. But that ain't the way. Sixteen. Woe unto you, blind guides, who say. Who, whoever swears by the temple, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the gold of the temple, it is ob he is obligated. It's kind of crazy, isn't it? You can't stand on 
the temple, but you can sure make sure you're not cursing or doing anything against my wealth and riches. <laughs> Sounds familiar to in some ways. You fools and blind men, which is more important, the gold or the temple that sanctified the gold. And whoever swears by the altar, that is nothing, but whoever swears by the offering upon it, he is obligated. You blind men, which is more important, the offering or the altar that sanctifies the offering. Therefore, he who swears by the altar, swears both by the altar and by everything on it. And he who swears by the temple, swears both by the temple and by him who dwells within it. And he who swears by heavens, swears both by the throne of God and by him who sits upon it. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tithe and mint dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier provisions of the law, justice and mercy and faithfulness, but those are the things you should have done without neglecting the others. They require so much money, but they don't require, they don't show mercy. They don't teach them to live according to the word. You blind guides who strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Some of these scenarios Jesus gave is kind of crazy. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, for you clean the outside of the cup and of the dish, but in, inside are full of robbery and self-indulgence. See, the outside appears righteous, but inside is corruption and sin. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup of the dish so that the outside of it may become clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, and I'll discuss that in a minute, so I'll pass it over, which are on the outside appear beautiful, but inside they are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanliness. They're impure and filthy and polluted. Even so, you too outwardly appear righteous to men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness and wickedness and transgressions. Woe unto you, fry, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you blind tomb, you build the tombs of the prophets and adorn their monuments of the righteous, and say, if you had been living in that day of the right fathers, we would not have been part we would not have been partners with them in shedding of the blood of the prophets they're lying deceptive flattery words saying that if they lived in that day that i've heard that from people if they had been there they would have done differently <laughs> no your true nature is going to come out no matter what Cons consequently you wear, bear <coughs> witness against yourself see that you are sons of those who murdered the prophets fill up then the measure of the guilt of your fathers you ser your you servants you brood of vipers now shall you escape the sentence of hell how how shall you escape the sentence of hell Therefore, behold, I am sending you prophets and wise men and scribes. Some of them you will kill and crucify. I've had a lot of people, try, ministers and all that, try, because you're a woman or because of this. Oh, they're more important. You know, they put you down and you you don't uh, deserve what, where, what God had given you. That's why my pastor now, my con pastor now pastor and my mother I, I honor both of them because they they recognize what God had in us and encouraged it like a father and like a mother and like a uh, a, a pastor should he, he sends wise men and scribes and some of them you will kill and crucify and some of them you will scourge in your synagogues and persecute from the city to city they they uh they may not have done the dirty work but they were guilty of 
scourging and crucifying Jesus because he was telling them the truth and they didn't like it. And upon you may fall the guilt of all the righteous blood shed on the earth from the blood of the righteous Abel to the blood of Zechariah, the son of Bera. I'm not sure how that's pronounced. B E R E C H I A H. Berechis. Bereth. Whom you murdered between the temple and the altar. Truly I say unto you, all these things will come upon this generation. It's our generation now, too. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those that are sent to her. And how often I wanted to gather your children together in the way the hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you are unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate. No spirituality in it. I'm no, that's what I was talking about. Many churches have no spirit, no anointing, no uh, presence of God. For I have for I say unto you, from now on you shall not see me until I bless it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. So Matthew 23, we're describing. And this is what the hypo, uh, summary of those, what the hypocrites or the Pharisees were. He's, and in all that, he says, woe, woe, woe term really says, he grieves hard. He knows that they're heading for hell. He's they're heading for God's anger and judgment. They pray in public with vain repeti repetitions and long prayers. I would said that or read that. That's found in these scriptures and in a few others. They wanted recognition as, their, as being very spiritual when fasting. And they announced that they had horns blowing. I am fasting, you know, so, you know to announce. No, we're not to announce it. We're not to announce when we fast. They have a public showing of their giving. There again, they have all these announcements of and making sure the whole crowd sees what they put in the offering. I've seen a few people do that. <clears throat> Man... They have man-made traditions and customs for worship. Many churches and many pastors and many leaders have man's way of worship. Man's way of doing a church service. God's way is different. If you study the New Testament church and how they held service, they did worship, they and miracles and things happen. God fell every time. Souls became saved. Think about it. In the book of Acts. The first time they. they, God says to wait. It means be in my presence. And worship me. Until the Holy Ghost falls upon you. And when the Holy Ghost fell. Signs, wonders and miracles happened. And then 3,000 souls. People got saved. But they want to do their own way of traditions and that. That's why a lot of these religions and false religions and Catholic Church and many other churches are doing things against the Word of God. They they took out what God's worship was in the Bible. Worshiping Him in spirit and truth. Worshiping Him by sacrificing of your heart. There's some in, I know personally that were Catholics that New Christ. Yeah, and they're dead. The Pharisees were dead, too. Because <laughs> he said they were full of dead men's bones. They prided themselves on knowing the law and having the ability to discern natural things. There were several scriptures talking about they were, could discern the skies and discern this and that in the natural but miss spiritual timing and truth. They can't even discern. They can't even understand what the word is really saying. And yet they knew the Old Testament. You see, they had, at that time, they only had the Torah and some of the prophets. <coughs> mm, 
I have one right here. It's called a Tanakh in modern. I don't know if you can see that. It's a has all the books of Moses and the prophets and certain ones. And this is what the only thing they had in the New Testament until the word came and until the word was written years later. Because even revelations and some of these other scriptures were written, but they weren't applied to the church. Church could, except for the letters that Paul wrote to each of the church to show them and teach them. But they would know all those laws and having the ability to discern all the natural things of what's really happening, what's going on in this world. I I know a lot of people they they. they understand what's happening in somebody's life and in somebody's home and the natural things, but they do not discern the spiritual things. What is really in God sees? What does he see in the heart? What he de what does he know? They miss the spiritual truths, the spiritual word of God and the timing. They don't even and many of them even miss the end time truths, the end time of what's going on. I'll go ahead and finish this since I'm almost done here. <clears throat> Man-made uh, spiritual timing truths. They added their own ideas and interpretations. They added their own way of thinking, their own interpretation of what the law said. Oh, this law means this, and you do it that way. Instead of doing what the Word of God says misinterpret, misapply in the Word of God. And you see that with the hyper grace and many of the uh, New Testament teachings and the teachings of the true gospel is being mistaught in many, many churches. And they're very deceptive. All right, Jesus called them. This is some harsh terms that he called the hypocrites. You are blind guides. You You'll lead them right into the ditch, right into hell instead of into heaven. You're blind yourself, so you're not going to allow them to go in with, get, find out the truth. Now, I've seen where leaders, uh, they may be blind and doing, saying the wrong thing, but they prevent others from really finding out the truth. They don't encourage them to read the word for themselves. Yeah, my mom, ever since I was young, she said, make sure you read it for yourself. Don't just take that preacher's word. Look it up in the word. That's why I give you scriptures to do your own studying with. He said, they are, they are child of hell. It means they're sinners. He says, they are fools. Amen. They exhort, they do exhortations and acts, they have access wealthiness and they, they exhort and misappropriate and, and uh, cause, in another scripture Paul was saying they will rob in w widows blind and it, you see that all the time. Many ministers say, give me a pro a, a Give me an offering for a blessing. Now, ain't, you don't sell your uh, blessing. You do not sell the word of God. That's misappropriating. If they give an offering, fine. But you do not demand or offerings. And see, why do you think they were so wealthy? They were demanding, just like the church, you give so much to this as penance. And you do this... And they're so wealthy. Some of the wealthiest religions. They, Jesus said they're full of iniquities. <clears throat> he also called them serpents and vipers. These are some strong terms. And that was in that chapter. He called them murderers. Alright. A also... He called them the uh, unclean cup and sepulchers or tombs. The tombs, he said they're white sepulchers or tombs when somebody used them.
to they, what they did was allow them to then uh, they were just like Jesus was it was like a little cave or a little hole in the wall or hole in the hill that they had a stone platform that they laid the body on and then once it's rotted and all that's left is the dry bones then they pick those bones up and put them in jars and everything and but there were certain people that did this but he says and then after that person you know it's finished being used then they would clean that area they would scrub it clean and they would check for uh weeds and uh anything that might like the he said the Pharisees would check the things that, for these little things to see if because you're unclean or somebody may be unclean the next one being clean might get dirty before going to have they're dead already so you know might uh are clean and cleared to make sure that that no clean person when they go into this afterwards would come in contact with that uncleanliness and become the, see the scripture talked to, in the laws talked about being unclean because see touching the lepers was being unclean certain things that you, uncleanness like Jesus when he was touched even by the tassel on his garment by the woman with the issue of blood he was considered unclean and could not teach or preach or talk in the temple or do anything unless he uh, d went through some cleansing rituals f for seven days. But this is what it was. They're filthy. He said, no matter how much you clean on the inside, it ain't gonna. You're still dead man's bones on the inside. All right. This is something we need to think about. What, because of hypocrisy, and to be careful with. Some things to think about as I end this scripture, end this Bible study, and we're almost finished. That we are to be, Jesus mentioned about being servants. He says, be humble as a servant. We are all called to be servants, no matter how high up on the totem pole or our uh, ministry or kingdom of God we are we are still God's servants so we need to act like his servants we need to be humble like his servants amen Satan's nature I just saw that that's what they are we need to be humble like him, the servant and we need to do things in private we need to, don't be like the hypocrites. He said, beware, don't be like the hypocrites. Don't do what they did. Don't do, uh, do as they did. He said, do as the word says. Jesus. He says, do things in private. Don't make all kinds of announcements that you're fasting. Don't make, he said, you, your reward for that fast has already happened when you do that. He said, and don't, uh, Make pretenses and reward, you know, that for giving offerings. That all do it because from the heart, not from the mouth, not from the visual hands that people see and things like that. All right, here's a couple of important points that we need to think about. He said, remember, he says to beware of false teachers, re false religious leaders, or these are false leaders. False prophets and false teachers. Jesus warned us of that. And I think it was mighty, probably in something Paul wrote. Or in one of the other books. But we need to be careful. Beware of these people. Of the ones that are hypocrites. The real, false religions and leaders. And what they, if they're teaching. Compare what they're teaching against the word of God. If it's not teaching the truth. If they're bending it to their benefit. God says they're hypocrites. He says, when we see someone who is a hypocrite, then he says to consider them as if they're unbelievers, that they're sinners. And not to support their ministry, especially if they're ministers. 
and churches. There's so many of these false religions, false doctrines, and and the following way that are very wealthy because people are flocking to it, giving to it. The sad part is what I found here at the end in a minute. He says not to support them financially or any way. When you watch them, when you pay attention to these false prophets and false teachers and false pastors and leaders, you are just as guilt supporting them by watching them. They sit, get bit viewers. And you are not to have fellowship with them. I'm just I'm about done here. I'm just finishing up. And you have to go back. We talked about being a hypocrite. Go back to the beginning and catch all of it. What a hypocrite is and what... And this last phrase, before I read these, before I read the last scripture here, he says, "If you do not disassociate or pull away from these people and not fellowship with them, not support them, if you do not do that and get away from that ministry, get away from that false doctrine, get away from the the f hypocrite, get away from those false teachers and leaders." You are taking part in their sin and what and you're just as guilty as their sin. When they sin, you sin. No matter what that may be. No matter what their worldly carnal way and their sin is, and you will go to the scriptures which I'm um uh, Uh, that you will end up, I can't remember, there's also Matthew 24, 51. That might be the one I'm thinking about. Let me quickly. Okay, and it is. And shall cut them in pieces, assign them a place with the hypocrites. Weeping be there, and the gnashing of teeth. It means hell. If you take part in and support and believe in what they believe. There's many false doctrines out there. And I can name you and name you and name you. A long list. Uh, and you'll end up at hell just the same place they are. But I'm going to read just a po last portion to end this Bible study. This word study. It, Jesus said, beware of the leaven. Leaven is a representation of sin. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. Beware of the leaven. So beware of hi those hypocrites, that we are not taken part of their sin, that we pull away and be like Christ, be like the Word of God. I hope you enjoyed that, and you may have to go back and listen to it again to catch all that is talking about uh, being a hypocrite. I'm going to get off of here it's bit, it's because I know this is fairly lengthy and this is good stuff. I, I was enjoying reading some things about it, you know, and, and trying to compare with somebody I know or heard about, you know, how much today a hypocrite is. It's in the church. It's in the gospel. It's in the kingdom of God, and it should not be. It is leading people astray. That's what a hypocrite is. Praise the Lord. See you next time.